My name's Sherry. Thank you for coming to join me and um, welcome to my podcast, which is where I chat on about um, the things that I've been making and what I'm up to. Um, I apologise first of all for the last one where there were just lots of um, giggles and waffling and I'm going to do my best today. First thing I want to say actually is in my last podcast I talked about um, losing two of our much loved pets fairly um, in close proximity to each other and I was really quite worried actually about talking about that because I wasn't sure how people what people would how people would react to it because um, not everyone has animals and uh, I just didn't know what people would think, whether some people might think, oh, it's, it's his dog or it's a cat. But thank you so much for your lovely reactions and messages. And what's apparent is that we all love our animals and sending love to you because lots of people are going through the same thing that uh, we're going through. So sending love to you if you've lost a much loved pet or any kind of difficult time you're going through because that's the other thing I think for the last few weeks is that you can be trotting along through your life absolutely fine and then something can happen and it's not just that event that seems to knock everything off kilter and it takes a while sometimes to get yourself back. So thank you for your lovely response. Also I want to say I brought along a couple of things that have been sent actually. One thing that a lovely friend, Sharon, sent me probably about a month ago now, actually. And it was from a company that I think was called Don't Send Her Flowers, I have a feeling. Um, and it was just like this almost hamper that she'd put, that she'd put together for me through this company with, oh, bath bubble bath in it and lovely things to eat and I'm vegetarian so everything in there was carefully chosen by her and a lovely book which is your gardening year which I love looking at and the whole box I should say was about mindfulness it's something that you can send to people who are having a hard time and the one that so this little book I sit and read but the one thing that um, I absolutely love is the Sudoku. Is it Sudoku? Sudoku, Sudoku book. And it's about taking, it's like all mindfulness, it's like the stitching, which I'll talk about later. It's about your, your kind of way of relaxing and winding down and making time for yourself. I'm obsessed with this Sudoku book now. So the first one I did, I timed myself, it took me about 40 minutes. It was, they're graded one to five in this book, and one being the easiest. And the first one took me about 45 minutes, which I can now do in about 12. Um, but that's part of my sort of relaxation now of an evening. When I finish work, I will think, oh, I'm going to go to Sudoku. So um, thank you, Sharon. That was just, well, you always send me lovely things, but that was just so lovely. Bloods of tears. Um, and the other thing which I got yesterday is from my lovely friend Carrie and again I'd finished work and I just sat down and I thought what's this, you know, what's this parcel I don't wouldn't know what this was and she'd sent me this is from Carrie's own pattern actually I'll take my ring off this is from Carrie's own pattern some lovely wrist warmers 
I mean, just beautiful. And it's her own pattern, which I'll put on, which is a free pattern, which I'll put on the screen actually. Um, living in these, absolutely love them. So thank you. And she's got the most beautiful handwriting I've ever seen of any human. So thank you, Carrie. That was just so lovely. Yeah. So well, I was just going to show you what I've been making, really. So, we'll take these off for a second. I've got three pairs of these now, and I absolutely live in them. When I, whenever I go out, I always keep them in my top drawer. One pair that she made me, which is beautiful pink, which are my best ones. So yeah, thank you, Carrie. Um, socks. Socks. So last time I said I was going to show you some socks that I did for Christopher, um, which I finished some time ago. Did I get them done in time for Christmas? Probably, potentially, not quite sure. But anyway, he's, he's been gifted them now. And so, in true Sherry fashion, they were a little bit bigger than I meant to make them because it's the first time, first time I've actually made men's socks. My husband hasn't even got a pair yet. Um, and I think I just made them too big, but they're really lovely, cozy, um, little ankle socks that, yeah, they were knitted in, it was double knit in a colorway of ours, which I th think was bitter orange. And I love knitting those actually, and they're lovely and soft and I might do some more double knit socks they were from a basic pattern i think it was kay litton crazy cat lady is it crazy cat lady i think it is um and that was just a really good simple little pattern which i enjoyed doing those the other ones actually really similar colorways which after these by carrie so we're moving into spring. The other socks I did were ones that I showed last time and I've completed one, um, which this was in, I'll put the yarn on the screen because spectacularly not brought the label, but this is lovely. It's very hard wearing yarn, but it's nowhere near as soft, but they'll be lovely. They'll, I mean, I should wear them and wear them, wear them, but they are, um, I've started, I'm like sort of down to here on the second one. So I'm enjoying those. Um, and we went down to Kent actually last week um, for a family um, event. Uh, it was lovely to see family, it was so nice. Um, and I also managed to see my mum. So I did a little bit, when I say a little bit, I'm really into my stitching at the moment, that's why, but... Um, <laughs> That's as far as I've got, that's it. But I worked out, if I do 10 rows a day, they're gonna be done in no time. No, I am enjoying them. I do love my knitting. But as I said last time, I'm just in a bit of a funny mood with sitting quietly. So with, with, with things sort of going around in your head. So I said the other day on Instagram, what do you, when you're knitting or stitching, what do you listen to? Or do you not maybe i often just used to love sitting quietly but now i have things going on in my head that i don't want to so i like to be distracted but i can't be distracted when i'm knitting because um it all goes horribly wrong so that's why i've not been doing so much knitting lately i do love it but anyway so what i have been doing every day um i showed you a little bit of this last time i podcast was I'm doing, um, it's just really some daily stitching, but in the form of a kind of a seasonal diary. It's not just nature things that are going on there, but I want it to be um, reflecting what I see every day when I go out on my nature walks. And the colours kind of, I think as the year goes through, will be interesting to see how they'll reflect that. And uh, yeah, I sit down every evening and do it and loving it. And I've been watching Endeavour, which I'm completely hooked on. Don't know what I'm going to do when that finishes. And what's the other one I've just started watching? Oh, I've just started forgot, watching one called The Unforgotten. That's my friend Nikki got me on that. I'm going to be absolutely massively hooked on that one. Um, 
Now, what did I just finish watching on Netflix, which had a really disappointing ending? You know, when you watch something and the end of it, you thought, oh, did I bother watching that for now? It wasn't very good. But anyway, endeavour. So this is my little uh, nature kind of journal, daily, mindful, slow stitching, embroidery project. Um, and I had a message the other day on Instagram, I think it was Sherelle, who said she kind of didn't know how to get started on it. You don't need to start in January. It doesn't matter when you start. In fact, beginning of spring is a lovely time to start a nature journal. And the nature journal can, of course, be, um, which I've got here, which is an actual journal where you, you write things down, which I also do. But you could do anything, you could do anything. But if you want to do it in stitch, basically, I'll do another video talking about how I get started, because you can get started with, um, so the first thing that went on this one was the embroidery of the wren. That was the first thing that started me off on this one, but it could be a pressed flower, or it could even just be a collection of fabrics, because I have got to have a tidy up. I have got so many little projects and little bags, and each one, is full of something that I'm doing and then I can't find the thread colours I'm looking for because they're all in bags. So in this one is all of the yellows etc that I'm just about to go on to for this because of the daffodils. Um, God, what I was saying now. But anyway, yeah, it can be it could be fabrics, it could be anything that gets you started, but I will do a separate video on that because Sometimes getting started, it's like, I'm like that with a new notebook. I've got a new notebook and I just think, I don't know what to put on the front page. What do I put on the first page? Leave it blank. That's what I do. And then you haven't got to worry. Fill it in afterwards. But anyway, uh, I, so I will do a video on how to get started if you're interested. But on this one recently, um, I wandered lonely as a cloud, I put on there. And there's a little blackbird. And a cow parsley seed head because I love seeing all the um, seed heads. I think they're as beautiful as the actual flower, really, in their own way. And what else is on here? Oh, some little notes. Oh, some Suffolk Puffs. I love Suffolk Puffs. And a little collection of colours that I put together down here. Polka dots, because I do love a polka dot. And some green, so I think that's going to go on at the bottom, but I'm not quite sure. I've been looking at that for a while. Um, but all I managed last night was the seed heads because I got very carried away with the morse, with the um, endeavour. I'm actually catching up. I'm only on series seven at the moment because I do that thing where I think, oh, I can't watch it because I'm not be finished, and now I need to catch up before I can watch the later series. That's what my head's like. Right. And the other thing I was going to do was add in. So I found a few embroideries that I did. Um, previously and I'm basically going to add these I thought I'm going to make quite some of them into cushions and a quilt a nature quilt that would be lovely oh a nature quilt that's a really nice idea actually anyway um that's my stitching and yeah I will do a little video on how to get started I feel like this is an epic waffle that I'm talking about now um now, the other thing that has been happening is not something I've been doing, it's something Chris has been doing, actually, and my husband. We, there are a couple of accounts on Instagram that actually inspired this, um, where they make lovely little uh, nature videos with birds. I was just, and I'm captivated by it. I spend far too long on my phone, on the Explore page, watch, particularly at the moment with not having dogs anymore or uh, lovely Tommy. I watch far too many um, funny dog and cat videos, but also these little, um, but nature videos basically as well. And these little dioramas that you see, um, little miniature scenes that people make and then photograph birds with it, etc. So Chris looked at that and thought, oh, I'd love to do that. So what he's done, is he wanted to create what he had in his mind from found items, found things. So, for example, we've got a 
a buddleia in the back garden and there are lots of little, um, where I clipped it last, there were lots of little bits on, on the floor and he used lots of those and just anything that we pick up, lichen, little bits of moss, things that you pick up on a walk and he's created this beautiful little hut, I absolutely love it, which is the beginning of a diorama that he's going to be doing. Um, with the idea, we've got some, when I say tame, pretty, you can walk pretty close to them now, wagtails and our blackbirds, and we've got one dove, I don't, just one dove that, that, that's coming to the garden, so we're, we're feeding him now. And two lovely wood pigeons who were completely flat in this. But the idea is that they will sort of form part of this little outside nature, yeah, diorama that we want to do. And then my husband, because as you do, has been making some little wooden houses, which um, my husband is uh, from the woodshed. I'll put the links, Instagram links below. Uh, Chris is Untrodden Ways, I should have said that. Uh, and yeah, he's been making his little wooden houses. So, which will be, at some point we've got plans for these. So that's not me doing that, that's them doing that. Um, that's not my, I'd love to be able to do things like that, but that's not really my thing. But I'm loving watching them do that. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been up to for the last week or so. So I want to say a really big thank you if you bought the uh, our A Dream of Spring sock set skeins or minis, uh, which was supporting Flower Power Fund and Marie Curie. It's such a fantastic cause and something we were really proud to be part of. So thank you so much. The very last of the pre-orders, I think there were about the last 10, will go out on Monday. So thank you so much. And there is there's going to be another yarn dyer on there now um, for the month of March. And there's also a lovely pattern that you can use for socks supporting uh, Marie Curie. And if I put the link below, you can find all of that on the Flower Power Fund uh, Instagram page. So thank you for that. That was lovely. And like I say, something really proud to be part of. And we've got something else that we'd like to be doing later on in the year as well to support them. So I just wanted to show you some of the colourways have gone into the shop. And oh, talk about the nature box which kind of ties in with all this slow stitching. So we've got a couple of new colourways that are going in the shop this evening and a couple that went in last week. So this one is Roses So Vivid, which is, um, it's the scene when they're walking along the riverbank and they talk about Roses So Vivid. And this is really like a really deep, plum damson colour um, with a kind of iced pink and lovely caramel um, for that lovely faded rose look. And this one is the River Chattered, which is um, it's another lovely quote from Wind in the Willows. That book is just, you reread it, every time you reread a book like that, you just, you read a sentence sometimes, you just have to put the book down and think that was just such an amazing sentence. My brother and sister-in-law bought that for our little boys when they were young. And it was read to them and read to them. And I still love it now. Anyway, so this is The River Chattered. And I'm getting more hot now. And this is On the Riverbank. This is kind of reflecting the vibrancy of the riverbank when it really starts to come alive and you get the um, colours reflected on the water. So you've got blues, you've got moss and olive greens in there, ochre, sort of amethyst. And this is on our Donegal, I should have said, sorry. These are on our um, sock base, which is 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, and this is on our Donegal sock, which is 85% Suposh Merino and 15% Donegal Nep. This is 400 metres per 100 grams. Um, the sock is 425 metres. So I had a question the other day from somebody asking about, because some, so we've got two ply sock and four ply sock, Donegal sock. All of these, any finger in weight, sock weight pattern, these will be fine for. 
Um, and we've also got some lovely um, on the riverbank minis. So these colours reflecting um, just a sparkling river, um, the riverbank, because the riverbank, I think, I was saying this to a friend the other day, there's always something going on when you walk past a river. I don't think I'd ever want to be far from a river now. Um, my husband's always loved um, the sea and rivers, and I've never, I've always been happiest in a woodland, but actually the river, there's always something, there's always something happening. Oh, and we saw the little cygnet that was born last year. Um, and his feathers are just turning to the white. And the beak is still um, not yellow yet, but it's so lovely to see. We saw them as little tiny cygnets last year. So yeah, there's always something I think on the river. So, and these are kind of reflecting, reflecting that. And I'm also, I've been rereading Wind in the Willows for, um, for the colourways. Now we've got two other things coming as well. We've got Peter Rabbit, um, inspired by the tale of Peter Rabbit. And that is our chapter eight of our little bookshelf yarn club, which is a, when I say club, it's as I've said before, it's, it's not a subscription. You can just dip in and out every month if something interests you. And it's a surprise. If you would like to know the colours, then uh, message me via the shop or on Instagram and or on here. No, I'm not on here because I'm a spoiler for everyone else. Um, and I'll tell you the, what colours are going in it. But expect P Peter Rabbity colours. Uh, but they are five times 20 gram minis and that will be on our sock base and that's going into the shop this evening. Wuthering Heights, which was last month's, um, they are mostly on their way. If you've ordered our, ordered our Nature Journal box, I think there are maybe three of them that we're trying to send out to you at the same time, to send you a little bit, save you a little bit of postage. But um, I've also been rereading Wuthering Heights and it's absolutely, it's another one of those books that's captivating. The more you read it, the more you, you get things from it that you didn't first time round. Um, and as I said, it's not always an easy read. It does sort of, Wuthering Heights, I think we romanticise it in our minds, but it actually does address some quite difficult issues, I think, but I just think that's an amazing book. And again, as, I, as we wrote in the little note, she never actually, Emily Bronte, never actually saw her name in print because it was published under a pseudonym. And she died the year after its publication, so she never actually got to see her name, which I always think is really sad that she didn't know how much her book influenced people for, you know, all those years. Uh, so anyway, so this is another lady, Beatrix Potter. So this was first published in, I think, the early 1900s. Was it 19... around 1910, I think, that this was very first published. And that's over 100 years ago now. Um, such simple stories, but magical. So that's the Little Bookshelf Yarn Club. That's going into a shop this evening. And then our nature journal number three. So we've just put our nature journal number two is all packaged and ready to go. And we absolutely love it. We're so thrilled with that. Thank you for your feedback on journal number one. I've had so many lovely messages from you saying how thrilled you are with it. I hope you're gonna love this one too. It's really, um, we just try and make them really extra special and to help you embrace nature and which is why they're called the nature journal box and box three is going up for sale on saturday and we're going to be looking again at the world uh, in march but we're also going to be looking at birds eggs couldn't be happier about that because i don't know what it is about birds eggs i just think they're absolutely beautiful and we're looking forward to that one that goes on sale this this is Friday. If this video goes out this evening, which I'm hoping it will, that will be on sale tomorrow. And again, it is a surprise, but if you would like to know what's in the Nature Journal, I will put some footage in here of what was in Nature Journal number one to give you an idea of what to expect, but every month is different. Um, every box is different. But if you would like to know what's in, because 
it's your hard-earned money. And if you would like to know what's in there so that you know exactly what's coming, message me and I will let you know. So, yeah, that's me having chatted on for quite long enough. Um, let me know what you're making and I will, like I say, I'll put a video up next week. We've had an absolutely manic week this week, but next week we're hoping to put quite a few videos out. And um, one of them will be stitching a wren, which I said I was going to do, and the other one will be how to get started on your nature journal. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Do apologise for the waffling. Um, have a lovely weekend. <laughs>